and welcome to Interfaith Spiritual Center Worldwide, where we believe that nothing happens by chance, that everything is by divine appointment, and that we're all here today because we heard the call. And if you are tuning in at this moment, this message is for you, because nothing happens by chance. That the messages are there as we are open and receptive to the messages of life. Our theme for the month is Invisible Acts of Power. This morning's topic is our invisible power, that there is a power for good in the universe, greater than we are, we tap into it, we use that power, we are co-creators with that power. Every visible thing was what an invisible idea in the mind of God whose time has come, the time is now, the place is where we are, and it manifests in our experience. And when we really understand that the ground of being is spiritual, it's the energetic energy of the universe that allows us to live and move and have our being on a higher plane, a higher frequency, because we are pulled down by gravity. We are pulled down by the doubts, the fears, the talk of scarcity and limitation. That's the human condition. And we lower our, our vibration every time we tune in to that energy. That when we know from whence we cometh and whither we go, it's that these things have been going on for centuries, and that as we make a decision, a collective conscious decision, that we are the pattern breakers, that we are not going to tune in to those light, lower vibratory frequencies that no longer serve and perpetuate fear. And when we are perpetuating fear, we give our power away to the outer world of conditions, appearances, and effects. And those conditions can look very, very real. But the invisible acts of power, our own invisible power, is there with us, within us, around us, above us, below us, everywhere present. And there's a beautiful book out called This Life, and I read it several years ago. It's by Sidney Poitier. And he said that he believed that God was a friendly force. So it really doesn't matter what we call this higher power, but to acknowledge that which is within us, that lives and moves and has its being within us, is greater than that which resides in the world outside of us. So uh, I like that. I like, you know, a friendly, a friendly force. And someone recently shared, she said, well, I call God happiness. That's what works for me, because I'm, I don't feel comfortable with the word God. And what happens with many is that God brings up energetically uh, a God that's sitting in a big throne, you know, keeping score, has a little black book, that's two. Energetically, we know that God is energy, a presence of power, and yes, a cause and effect relationship that we have with the universe. But that loving presence is ever with us, and we feel it, and we know that it's there, and it's very, very real. Voltaire said, it is in solitude when I am least alone, because there is a presence with me and within me, and I can feel it. It's palpable in the energy field. And Sidney Poitier was uh, talking about that when he was 15 years old, he was an illegal alien. He over to New York from the Bahamas. And he didn't know how to read, and he was washing dishes at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. And he said, every night, an old Jewish man with white wavy hair and great bushy white eyebrows would sit with him at the table after all was done, and they would read the newspaper. And he said, he taught me how to read. I don't know whether he is alive or dead, but there is something of him in everything I do. Energetically, there is an invisible power. There is God showing up for us in all the various forms and variations, but it is all God, and there is something of that energy in everyone who has touched us in any way, in any way that we have transmitted our energy to. There is something of them in everything we do. And of course, he went on to be the first 
uh, African American to receive the Academy Award from sitting, washing dishes at the Waldorf Astoria, having an old man with great bushy eyebrows teaching how to read from a newspaper. So when we look energetically at this higher power, that whatever we choose to call it, whether we call it the friendly force or we call it happiness or father, mother, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Brahman, Buddha, doesn't matter what we call it. But there is an invisible power in the universe and it is within each and every one of us and we connect with it every time we connect. When we connect in our oneness, that energy is there for us. And we have reconfirmations of our invisible power. One woman was sharing a story about how she was crying with her friend. And she was sharing that I don't have money for rent, that my daughter and I are going to be homeless. At 5 o'clock today, the landlord is coming with eviction papers, and I, I, I don't have the money for him. And at, at 4 o'clock that afternoon, a gentleman knocked on her door, and he gave her, and this was several years ago, the $550 she needed for the rent for she and her daughter. And of course, she just was overcome, and she wept and said, you know, she looked at her good Samaritan and said, how did you know this? And he said, I overheard you talk, speaking with your friend in the restaurant. And it triggered something within me. I have it. I want you to have it. And when we speak of invisible acts of power and the energy of the universe that is everywhere present, and there it is knocking at our door at a moment at the 11th hour saying, here's what you need. She said, in that moment, I knew there was a God, I knew there was an invisible power, and I knew that it was working in this situation. That these situations come up in our lives so that we can grow and unfold and expand past them. Yes, we are all subject to the human condition. Well, a couple of guys were out and they were out, out in the forest and all of a sudden, out of the bushes came this huge bear, bear and it growled and it was vicious. And so the one friend just took off. And he was way up a tree and the other one was just sort of standing there thinking, oh my God, what do I do now? So he remembered that someone said, if bears, you just lay down and pretend, you know, that you're dead. And they'll walk on because they're not interested in something that's dead. So he just plopped down on the ground, you know, very shallow breathing. The bear came and he sniffed around his head and his ears and could see that there was nothing here and just went on his way. And his friend came down and said, oh my gosh, it looked like that bear whispered something in your, your ear. What did he say? And he said, beware of false friends that run in the moment of danger. <laughs> it's my humor. I love it. Uh, beware of false friends. Yeah, that run in the face of danger, that don't stand by you. So we're all, you know, we all get scared. You know, the bears in our lives look like lack of limitations, other things, dis-ease that come into our lives, and they are there for us to take a stand and to realize that if we don't give it energy, it's going to go away. It's only when we give it energy that we stimulate that energy. And when we stimulate the energy and then we give our power away to it, that takes up way too much time and space and our vital life force energy. So when we understand that things come in for us to process, and we process through it and we come out on the other side of it. And when we come out on the other side of it, we expand, don't we? We expand into a greater knowingness when we are present, when we are there, when we are in that open moment. And when we understand that through this transmission of energy, that there really is something of you in everything I do. That every time we have that exchange of energy, that we are the sum total of every experience that we have ever, ever had. And that they come in so that we can grow and unfold. One young woman, and I'm, you know, very, conscious of what's gone on in our own community, said that she was, her roots were Korean and she left Korea when she was five years old. And she said, I've been a very fearful person and I went through a divorce and 
uh, I realized that I still had my mother's ashes and that she wanted to, me to scatter them in Korea. And so I was very scared and I booked the flight and I made it a whole, you know, going to Shanghai and to Korea and some other places that I, I wanted to go. And I was fearful, but I felt the fear and I did it anyway. And when she got off the plane in Korea and she went to her hotel, she saw a woman that looked exactly like her mother. And she said, I just forgot myself and ran to her and started saying, you look exactly like your mother. This, these are my mother's ashes. And the daughter who spoke English shared with the mother in Korean, because she said I was Korean, but I didn't speak Korean, shared why she was there. And she said that the woman, the mother, put her arms around her and held her and said in Korean that I am the messenger of your mother. And so we have these invisible acts of power that show up when we need them the most and to realize collectively that we feel for each other. We feel that energy. Your joy is my joy. I'm so happy for you when something wonderful happens for you as if it happened for me. And that your sorrow is my sorrow on another level because we are all resonating at the heart level. That it's important to feel our sorrow and to feel our pain. Because what is our pain? But the breaking of the shell that encloses our understanding. And once we have understanding, the day comes when we cease to weep that it's over, we begin to rejoice that it happened. And right here in our own congregation, to think that you know Doug could have you know a heart attack, he says a, a small one, but a heart attack is a heart attack, and sitting up in bed. And here, the, today on Sunday morning, when he spent the week at Desert Regional, to me, this is the phoenix rising from the ashes of burnt offerings to a cosmic flame of greater wings and greater expanse and greater life. That each of us rise up as a phoenix every time we overcome, every time we look fear in the face and we deny its reality, we rise up higher and higher. Because we are not allowing ourselves to give our power away to something outside of us. We are standing in our power circle. The ancient ones said, stand in your power center. Do not give your energy away to the left or the right. Be in that center. Allow the energies, the invisible acts of power to come to you in the form of an old Jewish man with great white wavy hair and great bushy eyebrows to sit there with you night after night until you learn to read because your future self is going to win the Academy Award. You're gonna be the first African American that was going to win the Academy Award as you sit at the Waldorf Astoria after washing dishes and going through a newspaper, line by line, sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, because in your future self, you are winning the Academy Award. I love the way life works. Life is an amazing journey. And that those moments that we have that, you know, we feel like we're not feeling it. Remember what Anne Frank said? I mean, it was just so profound. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when not feeling it. I believe in God even when he is silent. I mean, a 14-year-old girl and going on her way to a concentration camp, I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when not feeling it. I believe in God even when he is silent. Because there's something for us here. And that when we receive that message, and we expand beyond wherever we thought we could go. And just amazingly, how that happens. That there's a knock on the door. It says, here's your rent money. Our good Samaritan is there through this invisible act of power. Remember the story of the good Samaritan, how he was robbed and beaten and put on the side of the road? Jesus told the story. And a good Samaritan came along, picked him up, took him to an inn, paid for his stay, paid for his food, paid for his shelter. 
the good Samaritans in our life or the, those invisible acts of power that show up in human disguise, but the angels that we entertain and we are unaware. And I hope the man that was rescued by the Good Samaritan told everyone of his good fortune. How yes, it was very unfortunate that this, unfortunate that this happened, wasn't it? However, I hope he didn't tell the story and get caught up and I was beaten and robbed and laid on the side of the, the road and forgot about the Good Samaritan that put him up in the inn and cared for him. Those are the energies that expand. Those are the en energies that are divine precipitations of God's love for each and every one of us. Whatever we conceive our God to be, whatever name we put on it. So today, our invisible power is there for us. Let's open to it. Let's acknowledge it by means of one another. And let's know from whence we come and whither we go is because we are all going somewhere. And do you know where that is? Higher yet. Where is it? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. Because we are in a high place and we will not come down. None of these outer things move me. I am in a high place and I will not come down. And so it is. And so I say to each and every one of you, Namaste. The God in me salutes the God in you. Shalom. The peace that passes all understanding in our beautiful Lieberman Chapel. And God bless us, everyone, because there is an invisible power that goes before us and prepares the way. And I'm so deeply grateful for it. I love you, I bless you, and I'm so grateful to be here with you. So it is.